welcome to MCN and the 2022 Triumph Speed Triple RR. Now you would have seen a video on this when we did the launch at the end of 2021 at Ascari. So in that video we talk about the nuts and bolts of it, what makes it tick, what exactly it's like. But this video is all about trying to piece together where this very unusual looking bike actually fits into the world and how it compares to a super bike and a super naked. So let's talk about super bikes first because super bike sales are going down and down and down and down and down. And you can see why. I mean, back in the 80s and 90s and noughties, super bikes just were everywhere. And we all loved them, I loved them. Um, but as times rolled on and we've all got a little bit older, perhaps super bikes have become a little bit too extreme, uh, a little bit too fast for the road and definitely very, very expensive. So their appeal has lessened, which is why so many people have moved away from them because there's so much choice out there. Um, but what if you want a super bike still, um, but you want a little bit more comfort and you want a bike that you can use just for riding slowly as well as track days as well. Well, the other alternative is a super naked. So you've got all that lovely performance, but you've got an upright riding position. Well, now there's another choice with this Triumph because this is basically a Speed Triple RS Super Naked with clip-ons and a, a fancy suit, really. Um, and this Triumph hopes will give somewhere for Superbike fans to go to when they're bored of their race reps. So recently, we took this bike around our MCN 250 route with a Superbike and a Super Naked to answer that very question. Um, and you can read all about what we thought about those bikes in the MCN, uh, it, the, either the paper edition or the digital edition. Um, but really I'm here today to give you a bit of an overview. So if we talk about the Superbike first, we chose the most kind of road friendly of all the Superbikes, which is the GSX-R 1000R. Um, it's a proper Superbike, it's extremely fast, it handles brilliantly, it kind of belongs on track. It, um, isn't too uncomfortable actually. I actually rode a GSX-R1000 down to Aragon a few years ago uh, in one hit. I did a four hour endurance race on a Suzuki Katana when I was there and I rode back again. So comfort isn't too bad, but it is a big compromise. And around the MCN250, on the, the parts where you can have a bit of fun, the way a superbike's designed makes complete sense because you've got low bars to put all your weight over the front. So you've got lots of feel going into corners. You've got quite high pegs for ground clearance. Um, you've got a low screen so you can get tucked in uh, down the straights. But for the rest of the time, it's a little bit of a compromise and the Superbike feels like a little bit of a waste. So then we jumped on Super Naked and we chose Aprilia's 200 V4 factory. So that is MCN's favorite Super Naked and it has been for the last squillion years. It is a full-blooded Aprilia RS V4 Superbike with straight bars and it does absolutely everything. So it ticks the, the performance box around the twisty bits of the MCN250. It's just so much fun. That, that particular Super Naked with its Olins, electronic Olins, just floats over bumps. It's got a velvety ride quality, fantastic brakes, amazing engine sound. You couldn't ask for anything more really, it's, it's amazing. But the best thing about it is when you want to ride it slowly, it's quite comfortable because you've got the upright riding position um, and you've got lots of technology, uh, all the bells and whistles, just like the Superbike. And also you can just enjoy it literally riding down to the shops, which you, you can't do on a Superbike because you've got so much weight on your wrists. So the big question is, where does this fit in? So like I said before, this was conceived to be a replacement for a Superbike and it is an amazing machine. It's 1200cc, 178bhp, a Superbike chassis basically, even though it comes from the, the Speed Triple RS, electronic Olins, Brembo brakes, you've got everything. It is in, in small doses, it's fantastic. It delivers all the thrills of a Superbike. Yeah. 
ride quality is really good much much better than the speed triple rs with its um, mechanically adjustable o-lins and the springs on those are too stiff whereas this bike here is much much plusher so that's really nice Um, and it's, it's a nice bike to, to live with. This is actually my long-term test bike. So I've done a lot of miles on the Speed Triple RR now and you know, riding it slowly, which is one thing you don't get to do on a bike launch because the whole train of riders is going so fast and you're on track pushing it to its limit. And even around our MCN 250 route, it's kind of a very technical assessment of a motorbike where you're you're doing miles, you're assessing the bike, but what you're never doing is sort of going slowly and taking the time to enjoy it, which is what I've been able to do with this long-term test bike. And at low speed, ironically, it's really great. The ride quality is good. The, the seat position, uh, the peg position is, is comfortable from the hips down. Um, and it's a lovely thing. Loads of carbon fiber, beautiful paint finishes. You can't fault it. It's very expensive though. Um, so although it's designed for a rider like me, it loves super bikes, it's designed for a rider like me that's got a bit more money because <laughs> this is 18 grand almost, it's incredible. But where Triumph have really dropped the ball on this bike is those handlebars. They're so low, it's basically like a super bike. So we found that when we jumped from the GSX-R to this, the riding position is very, very similar. The, the comfort's slightly better with the seat, there's slightly more leg room, but the bars may be a tad higher, but it's still a super bike riding position, so all your weight is on the wrists. So for sort of small scratchy rides, that's not a problem. On the motorway, when you get to a certain speed and you can get the wind support in your chest, it's not so bad. Um, and the fact it's got cruise control really helps as well. Um, you know, even on lower speed limits, you can just set the cruise control and you get a chance to, to shake your wrists off. But given that this bike's aimed at people who are fed up with that riding position on their super bikes, then really these bars are way too low. And it, it's odd really, with the speed triple, so the RS's suspension is way too hard and the bars on this are way too low. So the speed triple, both speed triples are too racy for the road really. Um, if this, the bars on this were just maybe an inch or two higher, it would make all the difference and, and it would be, it would be amazing, it would almost be faultless. BMW did a similar thing a few years ago with their RT, R90 Racer, and that thing had a torture chamber riding position with really long stretch to the bars. This is quite a long stretch and really low clip-ons. This isn't that bad, but it, it's getting close. So really for small distances, it's brilliant. Track days, brilliant. To live with, amazing, because it's such a lovely thing. But for any kind of uh, long rides where you know you can do a lot of town riding or a lot of motorway riding it's not as good as it could be so i would say that if you want somewhere to go from your superbike you still want all that superbike performance you still want all that superbike technology a super naked is still the way to go